It's been four years since we last received the same sex couple, so you can imagine how happy I am, because not only that they're not stuck in a corrupted demigod's body, but they're also actual playable champions within the game, who happen to be women. Hello my fellow warriors, hope you're doing well. I can't believe I'm finally saying that, but this video is brought to you by Opera GX, the first browser made for gamers. It's the perfect solution for those of you who game and want to use your browser at the same time, without reducing your PC's performance, because we all know what a RAM hug that can be. In fact, Opera GX has this nifty tool called the GX Control, where you can simply just limit everything and not worry about ping spikes, FPS drops, and overheating. Yeah, Chrome, I'm looking at you. It also has a feature called the GX Corner, where you can see all upcoming game releases and news, Twitch, Discord, and Spotify integration that can easily help you see if any of your favorite streamers go live, talk to friends, or even listen to Spotify. Which, by the way, mutes itself if you want to watch YouTube videos, so that's pretty freaking dope. The browser is also completely customizable, so if you're in a mood for a different aesthetic, you can always switch it up. And it also has a built-in VPN and cleaner, in case you want to stay sneaky and delete all of your browser history for many, many reasons. <laughs> Oh, and if you're worried about all the stuff that you have saved on your current browser, worry not, because Opera GX has its own import tool. All you gotta do is go to Settings, go to Synchronization, click Import Bookmarks and Settings, and click Import. And it's done! The app is completely free and you can download it from the link I'll leave to you in the description down below. So again, huge thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video, and now, let's go back to Loring. For years, we knew these two were fruity as fuck. And with the Runeterra card interaction where they're literally all over each other, the Battle Queen story where they're practically married, and this iconic emo that threw all the homophobes into a raging fit, it was only a matter of time for them to drop this bomb. A very hallmark coming-of-age love story. Surrounding an outcast and rebellious orphan girl and the privileged popular top classmate who manages to see through her many flaws, aka standing her ground, debating like a pro, and questioning the religion that is the sun. We also got to learn more about Leona, like the fact that she has two younger siblings, Idanel and Caspina, and two pretty strict parents, who are also famous Solari forgers. The diary style that it was written in alongside Diana's little sketches made me all out loud. But what really pulled the strings in my art was obviously the iconic kiss. The kiss that made both China and Russia censor the whole story on their end, by the way. <laughs> I've already spoken before about the legal struggles of LGBTQAI plus representations within the world of Runeterra, but basically it's not that Riot and its employees don't want it, but because there's a lot of legalities involved in it, including the actual safety of employees within the countries where anything LGBTQAI plus related is illegal. So I honestly would like to thank Jared and Mary for signing it off, allowing Dana to be able to push this relationship into canon. I know you guys are walking on a really tight rope here, and yet you guys still did it. So again, on behalf of me and the rest of the community, thank you for making this happen. Now you might be asking yourself, but Dinka, why are you happy? Don't you like hate Leona? And the answer is yes, yes, I do. But I don't have any issues with this story because this occurred way before all the drama that we know of that happened in the future. Now we just know that they had feelings for each other and that those feelings are probably still there based on this gay silence alone. The big question I have right now is what is going to happen in the future. I spoke about this both here and on my Twitter, and the gist of it is that I do not appreciate the fact that someone at Riot had fucked around with Diana's and Leona's lore. In the previous lore, Diana's ascension, Leona's betrayal, it was all a lot darker and epic. But now it has been turned into a Disney fanfic, which takes away from the badass warrior ladies that they are. These two characters' lore was never introduced to us as a love story, so the fact that it's all being twisted into it feels a little too forced if you ask me. And no, I'm not talking about the new story, again, this is just about their bios. I love the fact that Leona was kind of like Diana's nemesis and she was chasing her down because she's a heretic, but also because she needed answers. But now it's all like, oh, Diana murdered all the Solari elders? Damn, that poor gothic Sailor Moon. I bet she's just so scared and confused. 
I gotta find her to fix this. They could have potentially had the best enemies to lovers story. But now that Leona's attitude has changed and Diana's demeanor became a lot more subtle, I'm royally pissed! Because Diana was one of my very first champions that got me into playing the game. I related to her on a spiritual level and felt like an absolute badass playing her. But now she went from a spiritual edgelord that has been mentally fucked by the moon to poor little swiveling mess that has no idea what's happening and needs Leona to fix her because reasons. Which again makes no sense because based on the Battle Queen story, we all know that Diana is a top. So yeah, I'm practically mad because Raya decided that Leona never portrayed Diana and that hating on her makes no sense, which means that I don't know what to do with all this pent-up anger I had towards Leona for the past four years. So Raya, please fix it and stop fucking with completely fine stories. I don't even understand why you're messing with Diana and Leona when you should probably be working on this mess right here. The changes you made on Quinn's bio, by the way, are also not appreciated. Because we all know that she's a bad bitch and is mentally resilient and will never work for a Demacian upper-class family for the sake of money. Her whole thing was that she was a lone wolf and she's working on her own and she doesn't need anybody. So how the fuck did you decide to change all of that all of a sudden? Anyway, let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about the recent changes? Do you like it? Do you think it's forced? And if you had to change one of the many lore that needs an update, who would you choose? As always guys, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon and donation pages. Huge thanks for today's Patreons! Anime Descent, Kovu, Whispered, Emma Rasa, Riposh, Clockrock Ronin, and TV Skyne for making this video possible. Thanks again, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!